hello people of the internet when battery man isn't putting batteries on the wall of his house digging boreholes in his garden or putting batteries into electric vehicles don't you know pump it up you got to pump it up i'm doing the mundane stuff like fixing this diesel van behind me so this van has a problem and in this video i'm going to explain why i'm choosing to fix this and not doing what feels more and more logical to me, which would actually be changing this for an electric vehicle. Let's get into this. Underneath here are the injectors, we'll see them in a minute. And one, just one of these injectors is chuffing. And this is called, with Mercedes, black death effectively the injectors are blowing by a little bit of the fuel and cylinder emissions out of the surround of the injector into the area above and eventually this will kill the engine presumably that cylinder isn't going to be running with the right amount of air in it after this so i've got to take that old injector out clean it up and fit a new seal and secure it down fortunately for me it's just the front injector as we'll find out in a second. Just like going to the chiropractor, but for a van. How is it that some plastic under an engine bay doesn't last very long whereas this bit of plastic here and it is hot because i've just done a long journey in this how is it that this is just absolutely fine so what exactly is this van it's a 15 year old mercedes vito that's covered well over 300,000 miles i've done a good portion of these miles myself and overall it's been a pretty good van it's still on the original turbo engine and gearbox reaching the goal of 300,000 miles yay Woo made me keep hold of this vehicle the last couple of years but i've heard of these vans doing twice the mileage that i've put on it the om646 engine is known to outlive the body of a veto whoa a diesel and not a battery wait what what are you doing battery man I thought you cared about the planet. This is the very early stages of Black Death. No, not the 14th century one. This is blow-by of diesel fuel and cylinder gases that create a black, sticky tar that becomes hard over time. I heard this only a few days ago, making an odd noise, and this is the earliest that I could get round to ordering parts and the tools needed to do this job. Believe it or not, this is caused by one copper washer failing, and if left any longer, it dramatically increases the time for the repair, trying to clean up the mess that it causes. Now, there are probably better degreasers than Mr. Muscle's oven clean, but it works, it does the job, it makes light work of this yucky stuff. There is a lot of cleaning in a job like this. That's a problem you don't get with electric vehicles. Leave that one in the comments for people to battle out which is better. While I remove the leak off pipe, injector fuel line and power connector, let's touch on the question of why I've been keeping hold of this van rather than swapping it for an electric van that would dramatically reduce my fuel cost. This van rarely goes over 100 miles in a day and I've got a three-phase EV charger and all the power that I could want to access. Well, for one, I want a van with a higher payload, near the one ton mark. So the new electric Vito is just no good and the transporter is, well, a failure to EVs and the ID Buzz has a low payload. This leaves the Stellantis van with the 75 kilowatt hour battery and that actually has a one ton payload. 
having driven it, it felt a little dull and, well, not so solid. The glove box hinges up, and I think they've done that because they couldn't make it strong enough to hinge the other way. And the trim underneath that glove box on two different vehicles, one-year-old vans, it was hanging off with clips behind broken. There you go. But this is actually the best bet at the minute. There are a lot of these as fleet vehicles on the road, so the second-hand market for parts shouldn't be a problem in the future. But 11 to 13,000 for a four-year-old van still feels steep to me. Maybe I'm just stuck in old vehicle prices. So I've told myself that I'll wait until the fleets flood the market and then see what happens in the electric van market. I do like the Ford E-Transit Custom, but they're still 25 grand. The Maxxis and the Kia PV5 are too new to have a second-hand market. In five years time, the Kia PV5 would probably be the perfect van. You know, the Chinese have a range of vans coming to the market. So I guess for me, it's just a waiting game and then see what happens. Nothing stands out enough for me to just want to part with my money right now. If Tesla brought out a van, I'd jump on that lease. When you compare the range of electric cars, the options for electric vans really do seem to be lagging behind. So for now, the Stellantis Group, the Evavaro and eXpert does seem to be the best option, but we'll wait around and see what happens in the next year or two, hey? You never know, the perfect van might come up in six months and then we just swap it to that one. Okay, so that came out nice and easy. But now we've got to clean up the mucky mess that's left behind. It's kind of a thick, tarry, yucky material. So I'm going to stick the vacuum on it with this little bit of hose. But this is a plus for the electric vehicles. Yes, you might get shocked and die, but you ain't going to get tar everywhere. Reminds me of taking off an inlet manifold on a diesel. Exactly the same sort of stuff here. The Mr. Muscle definitely softens it up, but it's still gooey and mucky. I'm trying to avoid as much of this going down that cylinder as I possibly can. Ooh, what's that down the hole? It's the sponsor to this week's video, Incogni. Just like this injector seal breaking wasn't my fault, you could find yourself on the wrong side of data breaches with your data being used against you. This is where our sponsor Incogni comes in. Now, of course, you could contact every data broker where your data could be used against you yourself, but let's face it, none of us are gonna do that. It's a lot of work. And that's where Incogni, for a small fee, will do that for you and protect your data, get you back your data. It's only through sponsors like Incogni that we're able to produce these videos, so please check them out. Link to Incogni is in the description to this video as well as probably down here. Just please go to the description. Back to the video. So it's so cavernous and black down there that I can't get a good shot down the cylinder. How annoying. Okay, so cleaning up that hole has made an absolute mess of the thread for the little bolt that goes through. I'm going to need to run this thing down that hole to clean it up because it is rank. Just absolute tar. Now, I've run this down the threads a few times and I'm still bringing up more of this sooty material, tarry material I should say, that's ended up down this hole. We want a good thread 
and this is really important because later on we're going to talk this down and then turn it a bit more and that's going to be no good to us if we can't get an accurate torque figure because of all this tar here. Not even started on cleaning up the injector hole or removing the uh, the old seal, the problem seal yet. And it's going dark, so I'm probably going to end up picking this up tomorrow. Annoyingly, even cylinder one is tucked behind this. Now I wanted to avoid undoing that because well, it just creates more work, doesn't it? And I can't find my mirror, which would have me see down the cylinder. So uh, out might come my phone. Ah, to get that old injector seal out. I tried picks, forceps, a tap on the end of a socket, breaking it free with the injector cutting tool, and finally, I borrowed some compressed air from the borehole project down the garden. Yeah, I did have to move the giant compressor out the garden for that though. There is nothing like waking up to deal with yesterday's problems, hey? <laughs> now I trapped a piece of pipe in when I closed this last night, the piece that I was using to vacuum out that gunk and some of it's come out of this hole and fell onto the power steering pump so now there's like an oily residue there this gunk is absolutely disgusting it just gets everywhere and i think it's still down our bore and holding that o-ring in so i'm going to try a few different methods to free up that o-ring so i can pull it out compressed air is one of them i'm going to try using the seat cleaning tool to break off everything that's down that around that as well so let's get in with it so that yuckiness is what is holding our o-ring in at the minute okay so while i'm here swapping out this injector seal on this diesel veto i've been thinking about the whole ev and ice divide it's not just a tech debate it's emotional People feel so strongly about this, and I get why. For me, EVs represent a step forward in efficiency, turning most of their energy into movement instead of heat. That's what really appeals to me. Less waste, fewer moving parts, and let's be honest, no injector seals to replace. And of course, batteries are involved. But I also get the frustration. A lot of people feel that EVs are being pushed on us, sometimes backed up by shaky facts or half-truths. EV battery fires, batteries not lasting long enough. And others, they just refuse to accept any kind of change. It becomes tribal. You're either for progress or against it, when really, it's not just that black and white. And even now, this diesel van has a role to play. It's a workhorse. Try riding a bike 100 miles with a load in the back and tell me that this isn't efficient in its own way. So I'm curious, what's your take? What do you drive and why? Do you feel that EVs are the future or are they just being forced on us before they're ready? Let me know in the comments, I want to hear real opinions, not just the loudest ones. It is pretty tricky to see down the bore. Put it this way, I don't ever want to do cylinder number four. I ended up settling on old phone camera to shine light down and new phone camera to show me what was down the hole. I needed with each step to make sure that each step was exactly how it was expected to be and ready for the next one. Yeah. So with that injector seat cleaned, then recut, then nicely cleaned up again, we can put a little bit of grease on the injector to hold the new copper ring in place, ready for it to sit back in the cylinder head. I've added into the description the Amazon links for the seals and bolts needed to do this job on both the Vito and the Sprinter, but not just that, the tool needed to clean the seat and also a puller which can be used on any vehicle. 
add a fresh bolt which we torque down to 7 newton meters and then turn a further 180 degrees wow so that torque figure of 7 newton meters then the 90 and the 90 felt like it was going to snap off but uh, it was okay that just highlights exactly why we need to clean up the threads on that bolt hole before we try and put that bolt in. Then it's the injector line, leak off pipe and power connector back on, ready for a test run. Okay, so it's just a case of tidying things up, making sure that nothing is in the way for us to turn this thing over and everything that should be connected that needs to be just to test it is working. Now I had to put a socket on the crank to turn this thing over because when I was jetting down with the airline the exhaust valve was open and I didn't want to be sending the material through the engine I wanted it to come back up and out so I need to remove that that could be nasty if we left that on. <coughs> okay so that's out our breathers back on, power to the injector, our injector line, our run back line is back on as well. We need to connect the airbox, otherwise the math sensor will come up with an issue on the dash, which I will then have to reset. So for the sake of just putting this back on, let's do that next. Okay, so with everything together, let's make sure it starts doesn't leak and runs as it should, hey? Where did I put my keys? Okay. She runs and she purrs, yes! Well there we are, it took a little while to get the fuel back through the rail. Now, electric vehicles are fun to work on and it was pretty satisfying to get that Nissan Leaf on the road when it could have just gone for scrap potentially, but now it's back doing its thing. But there is something nice about working on a petrol or a diesel and having it come to life. It lets you know it's a life in a different way to uh, an electric car. <laughs> what do you think? Well, you now know my thoughts on petrols and diesels and electric. And uh, yeah, what do you think? It's amazing how divided people are on them. This thing has cost me a lot of time and money over the years in breakdowns and repairs. And it's been a pretty reliable vehicle but you just add that I've done a water pump recently the boost hose is broken the injector seal they're all little things but you add an hour here an hour there going and getting parts and uh, yeah I wish it was clear the data between the reliability of electric vehicles and petrol and diesel in many ways the motor and that of the electric vehicle is way simpler than all this complicated stuff Okay, before I go, do you want to be treated to the sound of a 2.1 litre four-cylinder diesel engine being revved? Yeah. <laughs> See you next time. Battery man out.